The Living Planet Report uh, comes out every two years. I think it was first published in 1998. It's uh, essentially a, an overview of the impact of humanity on planet Earth. Uh, an important part of that work uh, that's contained in the report is a thing called the Living Planet Index, which is the contribution that ZSL and the, the scientists at the Institute of Zoology made to this report. And it's the Living Planet Index is essentially an assessment of the trends of a, a large number of animal populations all across the world. So at the moment that index is based on 10,000 populations from over 3,000 species. I think for me, the, from the Living Planet Report, the main standout statistic is the Living Planet Index and uh, the Global Index shows that there's been a decline of 52% in wildlife populations from 1970 to 2010. Now this index can also be broken down into ecosystems. So we can look at freshwater, marine and terrestrial ecosystems. And when we do that, we see that the freshwater system has declined by 76%, which is much more than the other ecosystems. This means that there are roughly 25 animals present today in populations where there were 100 in 1970. Some of the species that are popular with visitors here at ZSL London Zoo, uh, we've also seen a decline in their populations in the wild. And one of those examples is the African lion and in Ghana's Mole National Park, uh, there's been a 90% decline in that population over 40 years. The Living Planet report has highlighted that harbour seals and the European eel are in decline. And the UK and Europe conservation programme here at ZSL has two long-term monitoring projects for this species. For the European eel, we've been monitoring them since 2004, using quite simple eel traps across the Thames River Basin district. In 2011, we started our Thames Harbour Seal Conservation Project, which includes annual monitoring of the harbour seal in the Greater Thames Estuary. This was in response to declines that some Scottish harbour seal populations had seen in recent years. So it's really important to have long-term monitoring projects for endangered species because we can then see how the populations are doing, if there's any recovery in these species or if there's any further decline. Uh, while we've seen these uh, catastrophic declines within the Living Planet Index, uh, one of the things that we've seen is that this isn't inevitable. There are various examples of uh, places that have managed to reduce their ecological footprint or to bring together politicians, businesses to work towards a more sustainable way of living. And some of the examples of where that's been successful is that red kites in the UK, for example, have gone through a really successful reintroduction program, going from being almost extinct in the wild to something like 2,000 breeding pairs, uh, something like 10% of the global population. And I think that if we can bring together the political will, the business pressure, and reduce our personal footprints, we can really move towards a place where these declines aren't inevitable.